Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And this week on today's roundtable, we've got the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Good. Happy to be on again. We've got Eric, no nickname, Peterson. Eric, how are things going? <laughs> doing good, doing good. Mike's over there laughing at me. He'll have a nickname by the end of this podcast. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, absolutely. The Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Just a very Zen-like way of doing business. Mike, the Zen master, Zeno. Mike, how many people's lives did you save this week at the uh, firehouse? Uh, I don't know. We did actually have a, uh, a good fire. Well, I guess kind of a bad, that's that an oxymoron. Good fire. I don't know. It, yeah. Kind of, I mean, it could be. It's, it's good because you, we, yeah. we like to do our job and help, but it's bad for the people whose house, but we did save most of the house. But anyway, yeah, nobody got hurt though. That was key. I did that's, fall flat yeah. on my face in front of a, a few people, but I tripped. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice. Uh, I guess. Barely and Aaron. Hey. Barely and Aaron, how are you? Aaron Williams. Doing well. Doing well. A big roar to everybody. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice to have you back on the podcast. And of course, you know him. You love him. Six Sigma. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net. Landmoto.com. And if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, the compassionate Scott Todd. How are you? Mark, it's great. Can I go ahead and give my tip of the week now? <laughs> all right let's have it i'm ready to go let's go right now Let, we're not going you're gonna go last now for uh, sure because i'm gonna think of it he's got stealing my tip of the week i got uh, it man i got it i can't wait I, I, okay my tip of the week is, okay let's go ahead mark i'll let you go all right all right so this week's topic uh bearland aaron was talking about a uh an issue he was having so aaron take the floor tell us what's going on we're gonna mastermind it well, it seems that, um, you know, sometimes the business is just a real grind. Um, and, and for other, other people, it seems to just be real fluid and flow. And, you know, the, the sales come in, the deals come in, everything, it works really smoothly. And other folks, it's just, it just no matter what you do, it seems like they're, it's always just, you know, pushing uphill and all, you know, and I'm trying to, trying to figure out what maybe is the difference. Like why are, why are some people working smoothly? Other people are just grinding. Um, you know, what could that difference be? Mike Zeno. Hey, that's a great are question. You, are you, do you grind or are you fluid? I prefer fluidity. Uh, I, I think that uh, we're talking about kind of, I think um, Raylan Aaron's talking about effective versus efficient, right? I mean, grinding is okay in the beginning, right? You're getting deals done. You're making things happen. I mean, it's not bad to, to work hard and make things happen. But when you talk about how to escape the grind, I think it really comes down to, and we're looking at the efficiency. We're looking at the systems, the automations, the software, sometimes focusing so much on one particular thing can remove you from the bigger picture of what, you know, if you're doing that one thing one time and then doing it again, but stepping back and seeing, well, what am I really doing here? What's happening? Um, is this, you know, is this going to be a reoccurring problem and how can I create some sort of automation some software, some delegation, put someone in place to handle it. And that's going to remove that grind. The grind is when we're doing the work ourselves. That's, that's a grind that certainly is. And that's going to come up. I mean, there'll be times when a VA will start working for you and you'll have to get another VA and the grind will come back, but you'll quickly get rid of that because you know how to put things back into perspective. So, I think that, yeah, I mean, just the more we systemize, uh, that's not even the right word, systematize, there it is, automate, delegate, uh, use software like LG Pass. These are the things that are going to remove the grind. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're selling land, uh, Aaron, and you're making deals, you're effective, right? I mean, at least you're effective, right? If you weren't effective, I'd say, geez, well, we got a problem here. But you're effective. Efficiency is going to come, but it's going to come through, you know, these other mechanisms that I mentioned. I like that answer. Uh, Eric Peterson, what's, what's your feeling about this? Well, I think uh, Mike touched on a lot of the, the issues that came to mind. Um, one thing he didn't mention, which kind of was at the top of my list, was I feel like 
um, once you get comfortable in an area and you kind of settle in and, and you begin to kind of own that area for lack of a better word, um, you know, you're constantly mailing there, you're constantly having property to sell. Um, I think, um, that will contribute to kind of taking away that grind feel. Um, it becomes just kind of almost second nature, just doing deals in that area. You, you become so familiar with it that, uh, you don't, you don't have to think about it as much. And then, you know, automation, bringing in the VAs, um, and just establishing good habits, um, spending time in the business, on the business, on a regular basis. Um, all of those things, um, in my opinion, can, can kind of take away from, from that feeling of a grind. Wow. Tough to beat that Tate Litchfield. These two guys have just nailed it. Good to go first. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you have anything else you want to add? Not really. I, mean, I, I might transcribe this and, and start writing a book, How to Avoid the Grind. That's what I was just thinking too. Uh, I mean, that was, that was poetic. I guess we should turn it over to Spike, see what Spike has to say about it. Uh, see, he, my, uh, Tate just took the easy way out. Spike, Spike, back from high school. It's Spike. Oh, I'm back. Hey, yeah. uh, I mean, are you passing it off to me, man? Are you passing yeah. it off to me? Cause uh, I got. I. I mean, Tate, Tate's out. He folded. Do you see that? I folded. I. I mean, what, what Tate? I mean, you must have felt like you're grinding at some point. Absolutely. Or is it all fluid? At, no. For, you know? There's certain parts of the business that are sometimes still a grind, um, and I think that no matter where you are in this business, whether you're selling property every single week or once a month or every other week, there will always be parts of it that are a little bit of a grind. And you just have to put your head down and do it sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't matter how automated your, your business is or how many VAs you have. I mean, certain things have to get done. And sometimes it's you who has to do it. And I don't think there's any substitute for just that hard work. And that more importantly, that motivation, because if you have that motivation, you have that drive, you're going to make it happen. It's just a matter of how long it takes you to get that off your plate. And so, you know, Fairland family, I wouldn't worry too, too much about it. I know what you guys are, are grinding on right now. And personally, you know, it's a grind for every single person on this call when it, in certain, um, it's definitely a grind for everybody on this call. You know, the marketing is, it's always changing. And every single person on here is constantly trying to adapt and change and, and come up with new, new approaches to getting the same results. Scott Todd. Can I get my tip of the week now? Uh, no, yeah, you I'll can't wait. get your tip of the week. Just slip it in. Hey, how, it, how do yeah. you avoid the grind or, or, or are you grinding? Like, what do you, do you feel like things just go? Well, I mean, I think, I think that there's, I think there's always aspects of a business that's grinding. Right. But, um, I, I want to relate this to something that I'm learning right now, which is learning how to fly. And one of the things that they always talk about that they beat into your brain is that the perfect landing starts with the perfect landing pattern, if you will, the approach pattern, right? So like there, there are certain things you have to do in order to have a good landing. You have to be at a certain altitude. You have to be at a certain distance from the airport. You have to set the plane up to succeed. And what I would say is that you really have to set the business up to succeed. You know, look, if there's, if people are having success around you in a county, well, then there's no reason why you can't either. What you need to do is you really need to crack the code. Like you need to, I think Aaron even, uh, Eric even said, hey, I need you, once you own an area, and that's a key word there, once you own an area, well, then all of a sudden the, the grind starts to go away. When you're buying in this one area and you know the numbers, boom. And then you're building your buyers list, you're building your customers, you're placing your ads in this area or for this area, for customers in this area. The minute that you crack the code on that and you start to dominate that space, all of a sudden you become the go-to guy for that area and the grind isn't really a grind anymore, but it's showing up. It's, it's branding yourself in a way for like, I own this area, I'm the guy for this area. Yeah, I know for me personally, because I've been doing this forever, I don't feel the grind anymore. 
in land investing. But there's other things that I'm currently doing that I do feel the grind in. You know, the book, right? Um, that should be out in about eight weeks. So I'm saying it publicly now, right? But when you, when you have to face a blank screen or a blank uh, piece of paper and write, I feel like there's been days where it's just been a grind. Um, working out for me has sometimes been a grind. Taking time out to meditate has been a grind. Um, the, you know, so all these little aspects of my life, I feel like at times it's just not smooth. It's in, um, and I avoid it. So whenever I'm avoiding something, like I'm working on a slide deck right now um, for geek pay. And I, you know, I, have a, I have a, luckily I have a deadline for myself to get it done. But I can tell you right now, without that deadline, there's no way I would get this thing done because I'm not fully going into the process of it. I'm not fully engaged in it because I'm, my mind wants to be doing something else. And so a lot of times I feel like if you have a piece of perfectionism in you, right, you've got to get that out and you've got to really focus on getting it done. And then once you start, you'll get into the flow of it and it won't feel like a grind. I feel like, you know, whenever you, it's just a mental kind of thing where you don't feel like doing it until you do it. And then it doesn't feel like a grind anymore. But in the very beginning, right, as you're doing it and you're not fully engaged in it and, you know, the Craigslist ads aren't sticking or, you know, the phone's not ringing off the hook, you think you're doing something wrong and the next day you don't feel like doing it, right? Because you're not getting that, that instant gratification and uh, it can feel like a grind. But I think, you know, what everyone said, if, if we were going to make like a, a stew, I would add all those ingredients, the habits, the uh, efficiency, the, the mindset. Um, it's, it's all there. And hopefully, Bearline Aaron, that, that helps. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good stuff in there that we can definitely take away. And I hope, um, I think it'll help us, but I, I hope it helps people listening too, because there's a lot of folks out there that we see that uh, they get into it and then you don't hear from them. And I hope it's, I hope they can get past that point because it's a really is a really cool business. Yeah. I mean, and again, it's hard when you're really good at something to embrace the suck and be a beginner again as well. So it is going to feel like a grind. You should almost expect it. It's like, you know, I, I remember uh, last night I was kind of flipping channels and I landed on a league of their own and Tom Hanks, the, the one of the, the, the baseball players says, you know, it's just too hard. He's like, that's why he's like, that's what makes this, this game great. It is the hard that makes it great because if we're easy, everyone would do it. And, um, and that's what makes, you know, business great is the hard. So shifting gears, uh, Eric Peterson, Eric, the geek of automation, Peterson was talking about interesting zaps. If you don't know what zap is, please pause your podcast and go to Z A P I E R.com. I literally check that website every day. Z A P I E R.com Zapier. And basically it creates automations. So what has been your most interesting zap recently? Eric Peterson. Why don't you All start? Right. So we're going to start with me, huh? Um, there's a couple I could talk about, but I, I think um, I have one that kind of initiates um, a whole bunch of steps at the beginning of due diligence. So it, uh, it creates a folder on my Google Drive for the property, um, just an empty folder. And it also creates a task list in Process Street. And once that happens, um, I actually use Automator on my computer to watch for that folder to show up in Google Drive. And then it copies a series of folders uh, for the due diligence VAs into that main folder. So um, if you can imagine like you've got a property folder and then you've got, um, you know, maybe you have a marketing folder and a deeds folder and um, some maybe templates for different things or photographs folder, et cetera, et cetera. So 
when Automator sees that folder, it, it just, it copies all those in there. So it's already, the VA doesn't have to, you know, copy a, a set of folders into there and, and deal with that. It's just all set up for them to, to start working in. So um, that one saves me a lot of headaches because it was always troublesome for VAs to, to be able to do that and not um, overwrite the files and cause all kinds of issues. So, um, so I like that one. I like it. I like it. Mike Zeno. What's your favorite zap? <laughs> what a great question. You know, I don't even think this, this isn't true zap yet, but the idea that I, I think my favorite and my, the one I love the most is the fact when people want to buy, when I mail out to people, cause we've been mailing a lot lately, thousands of letters, uh, probably like about 4,000 over the last few months. And we have, you know, I just love that, uh, that my Twilio, they call this number and it goes right to my email and my VA is able to click on the recording. The number's there, you know, how that all is tied in through Zap, well, that's why I have a systems guy. I don't think it's through Zapier, but I love the idea that I have this phone number created and so many things happen from that point because we, I mean, that's just, we have so many coming in right now. It's ridiculous, which is really awesome, right? I mean, that's what we want. This is potential money coming our way. Uh, but the idea that I have that right there and then from that point, it can go into different uh, actions to me is just, so it, I wouldn't say it's the most interesting, but it's the one that stands out recently as the most uh, useful and, and one I love the most because I see it pretty much every day when I look at that email. Awesome. Bearland Aaron, how about you? I don't use a lot of zaps. Um, I really like what Eric said though, because I mean, that's a, that's a headache for me too. I'm constantly dealing with adding in these folders in the Google drive and my VA working in them and stuff. And um, I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that. And that's a, that's a great one, Eric. Um, other than that, I mean, we have a couple that, you know, have to do with marketing um, through, and I don't want to go too far into it because it's something you'd learn using posting domination. Um, but there's some nice apps in there that will help with uh, discovering ad content and keep an eye on, on things that you like as far as uh, Craigslist goes and that sort of thing. Um, that's, that's what we've got. Very cool. Very cool. Tate, the big papa. So my favorite zap has to do with uh, fancy hands. We get a lot of people that call in. They leave voicemails. I don't like spending time on the phone. Sorry, Archibald. Um, it's just not fun to me. I don't want to be talking to people. And so what this app does is it basically grabs that, um, that voicemail or that recording and it automatically emails it over to uh, Fancy Hands. And Fancy Hands can go in and call and, and basically ask some questions about the property that they're selling Fancy Hands then reports it back to us and we're able to basically look at it and determine if um, the property's right for us, if we should continue using it. So Zapier definitely um, makes my life a lot easier. It's one less thing to do, one less email to send. I love it. I love it. Scott, Mr. Automation himself. Mark, mine is a combination. My favorite is a combination of a few, but they all kind of do the same thing, right? So it took a little bit of time to set up, but uh, look, because my team is remote, um, you know, I, I have to think of good ways of like getting stuff to them because sometimes I will get like deeds or things back locally, not through my electronic uh, mailbox. So whenever I get things like deeds, whatnot, original deeds, they actually go into my nice scanner here and I scan everything into a specific folder on Dropbox. And then I've got like, so I've got like a deed received file uh, folder on Dropbox. And then I have Zap watch that. And when it sees it, boom, it knows what to do with the next task, right? So it's kind of like workflow built in it. It will take that deed, that electronic version, send it to my intake manager who will file it with assembly file. That's one example of it, right? Um, I've got stuff that's just in anything that comes in, in terms of paper goes into my scanner, gets scanned into a specific folder in Dropbox. And then if other steps are needed, boom, it just goes without me having to send any emails. I got all kinds of emails that get sent that I don't even do. 
you got to be careful though, because uh, I accidentally scanned in a deed twice and uh, eh, it was a little too efficient. We recorded it twice, had to pay double recording fees. A little bit of a mess, but it's okay. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, my favorite zap is, uh, you know, I have so many of them. Um, but one of my favorites are just when we get any kind of support email. I don't like having to f- manually forward uh, an email, right? It might go to me. Uh, and if it has a certain keyword in it, right? Like support or uh, geek pay or whatever it is, it automatically gets forwarded to the right person based on that keyword. So that kind of keeps me out of the, the inbox a bit. I like that. There's so many of them. I, I love Zapier. It's just one of those things you just got to go into like every day, play around, create a zap, break a zap. Like I'm, I'm always like, wait, that didn't work. And then you got to edit it. Like, wait, that didn't work. And then you got to edit it. And then, then it, oh, oh my gosh, it works. I just got this, you know, two minute task off my plate for the rest of my life, which is amazing. So anything else we want to talk about with automation, Eric? No, I think, um, I think that's a kind of a great segment to have. I, I, for me, at least just hearing people talk about different ways they use the tool. I mean, it, inspires you know other ideas of different things i could do in my business and i can imagine for the listeners it does the same so i i would i would tend to think this is a pretty helpful section yeah you know it'd be great if if somebody created like an automated way of getting paid every month via ach it did the math it did notifications that would be amazing i wish so wait a second someone did create that so if you want to see more of that Go to geekpay.io, the only set it and forget it automated way of getting paid every single month via ACH. ACH fails? No, charge your credit card on file. Scott Todd is loving that segue. Well, it's tying right into my tip of the week, which I'm ready to give right now, Mark. Fine. (laughs) Go, Go ahead. Give your tip of the week. And I get to go first. I'm so excited. Mark, you got to check out. I can't even do it. (laughs) <laughs> okay, Mark, you got to check out this website. All right, ready? Yeah. It, it will go out to the websites and it will automatically get your statements and everything for you. It's called filethis.com. And you it's so cool, man. My tip. <laughs> I what? can't believe you're, I can't what? believe you're taking filethis.com. You forgot about it. You face. forgot I, about it. I love it. I didn't have a straight site. face. I was laughing the whole time. Like <laughs> it, it goes out. It gets your, like your bills. It records it automatically into like Dropbox. It's the coolest thing. I love it. Have you been using it? It is really cool. I love it. It's I great, it. right? And it, it, it does all types of stuff. File this it's a, is amazing. It's file this. It's, it's like a dream come true. It's a must have, isn't it? And how much does it cost? Oh, that's right. Free. It's free. Well, I, I'm paying. I'm paying. I'm paying $20 a year. It's okay though. Because oh, okay. I have the premium. Hmm, well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't have the premium. I only have like yeah. five accounts in there or something. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. yeah. Um, <sighs> Kate Litchfield, what's your <laughs> tip of the week after Scott stole my tip? All right. So when I'm at home, I typically have my computer mounted and well, I shared, I screencast to a couple different screens because I like to work on uh, multiple screens all at the same time. But when I'm traveling or just not in my office, I don't have that same option. And so um, I was kind of thinking about, because I'll be doing some traveling for the holidays, just thinking about how I can be efficient, you know, and having multiple screens all going on the same at the same time without getting too distracted. And actually, I was just stumbling across uh, in the iTunes app store, and I came across one a couple of days ago called Magnet. And... um, It's 99 cents, and what it does is it allows you to basically break up your computer screen into several different um, workflows or work areas. So it's really cool um, if you're looking at due diligence and you want to look at Google Earth and you want to look at um, Google Maps all at the same time, you can use this app to see kind of what all the information on one screen at one time. 
So I've been using it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's a great alternative. Um, if you're on the road traveling and you don't have your, you know, office with you. And the beauty of our business is we can take it anywhere with us. So this basically prevents me from jumping back and forth between different screens and save me a little bit of time. I just kind of like it. It's cool. Magnet on the uh, app store. I don't, yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. Great reviews. I, I have it. I love it. Oh, you do? Tate. Yeah. Tate, welcome to 2017, brother. Well, I mean, I never had a need <laughs> that for it. That is so harsh. <laughs> I never had a need for it. I, I mean, I, I think Scott's like, you know, in 2014, I gave that as a tip of the week. The <laughs> no, I, I think I gave it in 2015, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, geez. I think we should let Mike. It's go. okay, Tay. Just go back to the old shows and just rehash them. It's all right. <coughs> old man, look at my life. <laughs> hey, hey, we we saying, know Mark's probably going back to the, to the old uh, podcast. That was pretty and good, Mark. Tips, so. Pretty good. You like that, Neil Young? Jeez, I'll give him a guitar. Guitar. <laughs> you know, speaking of, if you want to hear more singing, you got to go to uh, thelandgeek.com forward slash bootcamp. We still got a few spots for San Antonio. <laughs> Everybody's like, be there. Who's singing? Who's What's singing? singing right? Everybody's like, <laughs> gonna well, well, <laughs> well, well, last boot camp, uh, oh, Mrs. Yeah. Deniston was amazing. <laughs> yeah, we had a solo. That was awesome. Yeah, she was incredible. All right, Mike, what's your tip of the week? <laughs> well, this kind of this is something I've been talking about a lot lately, and, and Eric kind of hit upon it, and then Scott talked about it. They're talking about settle in and own an area. So you know me. I'm the king of odd references, so just follow this for a second, and don't jump too quick down on me, Scott. So in, in, and I don't know if you guys are all like jujitsu fans or ever seen MMA, right? They have this thing. It's called uh, position before submission. Anybody know what that means? It means like they're not going to just dive in and try to grab the guy in a neck lock or an arm lock because it wouldn't work, right? They have to get a superior position first. And then when they get the superior position, they go into submission. They can go from that point, they can go in and do a lock or a choke, whatever it may be. But the whole idea is gain a superior position. So I think in our business, there's a couple of areas you can look and see how this relates. One of them is, you know, position before submission. You may not just want to go into an area that you're brand new and just mail the whole county, right? You might want to look for the hot spots. And once you find them, you take them over. I use this a lot, though, when I talk about sales, right? Because... A lot of times people are getting people on the phone and right away they're like, okay, so you want to buy the property? Uh, you got $500? You know, they go right for the kill. And they haven't done the proper amount of positioning for us where I think in the sales, it's the questions, right? Asking them what they're going to use the property for. And, and you have the answers to these questions clearly because that's what we do. And you lead them into a position where then you can submit, which is make the sale. So I think it just, to me, this whole idea of position before submission relates in all different areas. Um, so yeah, so, um, do I need, is that clear enough? I don't know if they, that came I, I think I think it's a great tip. Okay. No, it's fantastic. Scott didn't even say um, anything, so it must be good. Maybe, seriously, I mean, <laughs> he's giving a thumbs up. Or maybe he just wasn't I like listening. It. I like it. I, I was yeah. listening. I like it. <laughs> Bearland Aaron, what's your tip of the week? Well, I just started using this um, this new password program. You know, we, we have so many passwords in this business, and, um, you know, this isn't something – new to the world. And I know Scott would say, welcome to 2017. <laughs> I thought it was coming. I thought it was coming. <laughs> so, you know, we've all used these before, but I, I kind of like this one because of the name and it's called remember. Oh, let's yeah. They, and they also, they also have a, a VPN, which, you know, uh, if you're working remotely and you're on a uh, public Wi-Fi, it's called tunnel bear. So, um, just a little bit to help with branding. Get started. It's free. This is very cool. <laughs> it is free and it's in, it's in beta. Um, it has, it's a iPhone app. I think they have Android for that one person using Android. And then they have, um, iOS or I mean the, uh, Mac OS version as well as Chrome, Firefox extensions and uh, Safari extensions coming soon. So yeah, my, my only fear is that it's in beta and that it's a Canadian company and maybe they're just, you know, being funded by the North Koreans to get everyone's <laughs> passwords. Like LastPass and 1Password, they're like established companies. And for the most part, we kind of know 
they know what they're doing. Um, remember, you're the first person we've you know to ever mention this, Barry and Aaron. Not to mention, I, I'm smart. just concerned. Aaron. Well, Aaron's it, new it, business has to start somewhere. Come on. Yeah, you know, and it, if they yeah. if 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 they don't last, you know, we'll say we didn't know about it, and we're sorry because they're Canadian. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you say Android like it's a swear word. I don't get it. It's oh, my, you're the one guy. You're the one guy. I have a Moto Z. It's like the coolest phone yeah. ever. I mean, my, Mike Never is basically just saying, "Here, take my passwords, and here's my <laughs> bank account information. I'm an Android user." I mean, I don't know how you sleep at night, Mike. I mean, that, that's how you know, like, like this. when you're so affluent, you don't care about your own personal security. Like, oh, Laura, guess what? I'm getting an Android phone. I don't know if they bet the apps or not, but it's really cool. That's not a good accent. And all these guys have the good. iPhone. It's not good at all. Ma- Mark, Mark, Mark. Do the southern one. The, the one that, from that Samsung Note's looking pretty good, though. Yeah, I can't. You know, I can't believe you're gonna go to the dark side. But speaking of the dark side, has everyone seen Star Wars yet? No. Tonight, don't. I, have, I haven't it. seen it. I'm not spoiling. I haven't no. seen it. <laughs> All right, we're going tonight. I have a prediction. I feel like Yoda's gonna come back, but I'm just saying. I don't know. All right. Well, I, my, I think I'll see yeah, it. Don't. Like don't. No hints. No hints. I see Bailey. Right. Yeah, I want to see it in two years. I don't know. The kids have seen it. I haven't yet. So. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been really nice to Eric Peterson this roundtable podcast, and I think. No, the things need to come back out, but whatever. <laughs> so my, time. Yeah, my, yeah, no. Hashtag Team Eric. All right, my tip of the week is um, there's a great quote from Tony Robbins. And he says, successful people ask better questions. And as a result, they get better answers. And one of the, the great questions that I like to talk about is if everything's going to change, what's not going to change. And cause I think about this all the time in the land business, like, well, what's not going to change. And I don't think what's going to change is I don't think um, people are always going to still going to want a real asset and people are always going to still want a good deal. Right. And I think those two ingredients really help our business, but I just bought this new book by Warren Berger called a more beautiful question. And it's a whole book about how to think about asking yourself better questions in every aspect of your life. And, you know, it's not just like, um, what's the meaning of life? Like sort of, you know, rhetorical questions. It's more of the long lines of everything's going to change. What's not going to change. It's sort of how to think about how to ask these better questions. Like I I asked Tate the other day, I'm like, how does land geek get disrupted or how does frontier properties get disrupted? And he really had to think about it. Like, well, you know, this could happen. You know, what if we go offline, you know, like, well, we could do, you know, back to radio. Well, what if we, you know, I mean, so it really makes you kind of think about these things um, and ask yourself sort of these better questions. It turns out the science is after four years old, um, we don't get rewarded anymore for asking really good questions. Um, if you've got children, like we all do, right? I mean, except Tate's, Daisy's not talking yet, but she's going to start asking question after question. Why is the sky blue? You know, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And like after a while, like you kind of tamp down the questions. Scott Todd in a, in a, you know, fortune 300 boardroom, probably not getting rewarded for asking questions like, why are we doing it this way? Right. But in reality, you really want to create a culture of asking these better questions to get better answers and having sort of that, that confidence in yourself that you don't know everything and we should be asking these better questions. So my question to you guys is, you know, why are we continuing to do this podcast? I like hanging out with you guys. It's it's a great answer, (laughs) right? It's fun. And we learn something new every week and um, it's great. So, but the question should be asked, right? Is there a, is there a better way to, do the podcast. Is there a better format for the podcast and the round table, right? Should we be thinking about it differently? Should we have somebody on, let's say a hot seat segment, right? Where we get a coaching student and we put them on the hot seat. So Eric Peterson feels a little bit more comfortable coming on every week instead of getting hazed by all of us, right? But these are the things that we can ask and, and talk about, which I think leads to better answers. 
So that is my tip of the week. I'm still reading it. So, and Barrelin Aaron always appreciates my book recommendations. I think he's the only one in the community that does, but it's not bad. All right. So um, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the listeners. I want to remind everybody, look, the only way Barrelin Aaron and Eric Peterson are going to continue coming on this podcast is if you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review, of the review to support at lang.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Again, start automating your note payments. Go to geekpay.io. Get started with your first note for free. And uh, you guys ready? One, two, three. Let, let, let freedom ring. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, this is next. By the time everybody hears this uh, podcast, it will be Christmas time. So wishing everyone a merry, merry Christmas. And um, I'd like everybody next year to give themselves the gift of additional passive income. Even an extra $200 a month will move the needle in your life, right? That's one deal. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, are we good? Anything else? We're good. All right. We're good. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right. All right. So what's going on for uh, – well, it's it's afternoon for you, Bearland Aaron. Are you? What do you got going on the rest of the day? Um, I am doing some office cleaning, and then I am putting ads out. I am marketing. Uh, I've got several things that need to go on landmoto.com and uh, nice. um, some other places. So that's today. See, I, it's great. I don't. I'm I'm so happy you're not letting the technology get in the way. So so many times people are like they they struggle with the the technology and they don't get anything done except they feel like they're grinding. So that's good. Well, yeah. And you know, that's why, you know, I went from a world of like, uh, you know, mechanical systems and it's, you know, it's, there's a big learning curve. So I've got to take it by one step at a time. Nice. Nice. Eric, you got anything good going on today? Playing guitar or? (laughs) No, I just uh, got some day job activities to to wrap up here today. So nice, Mike. Are, do you ever call your dad in the morning and say, "Dad, I want this for breakfast or lunch," or is it just he makes just makes you whatever he feels like making you? No, it's the same staple thing. Like one of the most favorite that we love is the peanut butter, butter and jelly, like his grandmother used to make. You know, you put that layer of butter there so the jelly doesn't soak the bread. That gets wrapped up in some nice wax paper. People love that. Wow. They wow. That. I didn't yeah. Care that. <laughs> yeah, that and a five dollar bill. That's it with my name on it. It's the Italian it's your name on it. Did you say Mikey wow. on it or just Mike? Mike. Mike. Just says Mike. Mike. There's no Mikey. Right. <laughs> nice. Mikey, I'll kill you. you call me Mikey. <laughs> but we Tate, it's, it's it's lunchtime for you. What are you doing for lunch? I'm feeling some I kinda wanna eat something spicy. So I'm kind of feeling like, I don't know. Sushi burrito. If I, I was out there, I'd go to sushi burrito. That sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll do that. Uh, that lucky. sounds really good, There's actually. No sushi burrito out here. All right. Scott, you need, you need to get some uh, Cuban food tonight for the family? N- no, but you know what, Mark? On um, On Saturday, man, I flew on Saturday and then – I got done and my flight instructor was there and, and um, he had finished up with another student and uh, they, they had, his next student had canceled with him. So I'm like, well, let's go get some food. And we went over to the Columbia for lunch. So good, man. So, you know, what I'm going to go do right now. I'm going to go eat some Indian food for lunch. Oh, that's cool. I, because, you know, you'll, you'll probably be hurting it, later. I don't know. It's a good hurt. It's a good pain. I don't know. Like, I don't no know. pain like, in non bread. The no, listen, no, the, yeah. the the best pain like could come from uh Bobby Flay's burgers, right? Bobby's burgers. Oh my gosh, Bobby's burgers. I can't wait for Vegas boot camp. We're going back there. That's a long <laughs> way from where the restaurant or from the hotel, man. 
it's worth it. Take a take a lift. I don't know. I could don't know. be. Could be. Well, know. you know what you could do is have it have it delivered. Although I don't know. Could yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot By of the way, good food at the uh, JWs. Yeah. Costco's delivering now. Instacart. Check it out. That should be my tip of the week next week. I got it. Yeah. No more Costco. All right. Really? Thanks, yeah. guys. I'm jealous of all you suburban.